We're going to talk a little Detroit Lions football, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, when you think that the Lions fell behind Tom Brady and the Patriots 24 to nothing before the end of the first quarter, <laughs> then they rallied. They scored 28 straight points. They wound up losing on a field goal with two seconds to go. Darian, what does that tell us in week three of the preseason? It's tough because it's preseason. So on the one hand, you know, if, if the if the Lions finished, you know, 4-0, 5-0 in the preseason, you would have to say it's just preseason. If they finish 0-5, you say it's just preseason. Right. They fall down by 24 points, you say it's just preseason. Right. And they come back, you want to say it's just preseason. I'm going to be a little bit more optimistic and say at least it shows this team has some fight. They have some fight in okay. them. They fell down 24 uh, to the best team in the league. They came back, albeit, you know, probably with their third string, fourth string at the end of the game just because right. it's, it's preseason. But it shows some fight. It shows some vigor. And uh, it's hopefully something that they can build in going into the final preseason game and, uh, and then into the regular season. You took over the rest of the show when I left Friday for Ford Field. And, and you get there and boom, it's 13-0 before the Lions ran their second offensive play. They <laughs> yeah. were already trailing. Uh, they gave up an opening touchdown, then they throw a pass, and there's a fumble, yeah. and then they come back, and the Patriots score again. But when you think about what the Lions did to come back, Tom Crawford with Jake Rudock says an awful lot that he is uh, progressing as an NFL quarterback. And now we're hearing that Jake Rudock is the subject of some trade inquiries Teams are actually calling the Lions. There are a lot of quarterback desperate teams. And they say, hey, you know, uh, you're not going to use a Rudock. Uh, okay, and then... No, you keep Rudock. I mean, you got to have a good back. You're one play away from using the guy. So definitely, I, you know, Jake Rudock, has got, he's earned a, a you know, spot on that team, well-deserved, and you keep him because he might be playing any second. What if you could get a pass rusher, a guy who could start for you in exchange for a guy who may never play for you Al, don't you have to look at that trade? You have to. You have to evaluate that. I, at least consider it. I understand what you're, what you're saying, Tom. I think Jake Rudock is a solid backup, though. Um, and really quickly, though, I mean, Darian, you talked about it being preseason, right? The preseason, the preseason, the preseason. Mm -hmm. Julian Edelman. Yeah. I, you know, I, my stomach turned well, when I saw Well, you know why? Because that's a chemistry thing with Tom Brady. That's his go-to yeah. guy. Yeah. You know? But it the, is. the Patriots are one team that can survive those kind of injuries, like Gronk and stuff like that. But there that, are an way ACL too many and an exhibition yeah. game, oh. There are way too many preseason games. Four preseason games I in the NFL. I can't even look at it, that it, It's ridiculous. I mean, you look at Julian Edelman. This is a guy, when he's played, 84 and 19 wow. with the Patriots. Without Julian Edelman, they're 15 and 10. That's they don't win the Super Bowl last yeah. year without that unbelievable oh, catch. No I still don't know how he came Right, out. exactly. Right. Right. So you, you hate to point. see stuff like that in the preseason. Oh, yeah. I, I've That's always true. looked at it and said, okay, one or two, not four. Four preseason games to me is way too much because then you have injuries like this. And this happen. is a non contact injury. This could have happened in practice. Yeah. We see this all the time, Darian. Is it just that in football, you're always susceptible to this kind of you thing? You are always susceptible to injuries. It, it happens, you know, far too often. You know, like you said, it could happen in practice. Tony Lippett lost the season on a non-contact torn Achilles in practice. Right. But uh, you know, this is why they're, 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 they've now changed the rules to where they're waiting until after the fourth preseason game for cut day just because they want to have, uh, as kind of, you know, as a former player, it's kind of morbid as it sounds. They want to have enough camp bodies so that they don't have to play their starters and, uh, and, and rotation guys in too many preseason games because four is definitely a lot when you look at it. Uh, camp is a long grind going through that. College, there are none. We didn't have preseason games in college. You know, the only right. thing that's, that's a little bit different, obviously, is uh, in the NFL, we're not tackling to the ground in practice. So you don't get contact, you know, full to the ground 